Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Fishing with Big D. Today's episode, I got something a little special for you. I wanted to go out and try this challenge and make a challenge video, see how well I did at it. Uh, what inspired me to do the challenge was watching uh, channels like Big Bear Fishing and Slayer Mike, and there's multiple, multiple channels out there that like to do it, but they like to make their own lures and then go out and try to catch fish on them. And that's what I wanted to try today. Uh, if you watch Slayer Mike, uh, he makes his own little trout lures, and this is more geared towards it. But Big Bear Fishing, uh, he likes to <clears throat> make his own topwater lures and different types of lures. And he gets really deep and detailed into it and uh, takes them out there and tries to catch bass and stuff. So uh, got a little bit of time. The weather still real dreary here in Virginia. A lot of flooding and stuff going on, so hopefully this <clears throat> won't affect us too bad. I think I might have a stream or two that's clear enough that might have some trout in it that are active, and we're going to go try to catch some trout. So stay tuned. Let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to put the materials and stuff together, and I'll walk through step by step on what I'm doing. And it'd be awesome if any of you guys wanted to try this as well. Uh, we'll use the hashtag trout lure challenge or make your own trout lure challenge i'll put it in the bottom when i figure out exactly what i want it to be but uh, we'll stick that on air and if you guys want to participate just use that hashtag and when you click the hashtag everybody's videos will pop there and we can see how everybody done uh i think it'll be a cool idea something cool right now it's early 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 spring very late winter and fishing's a little tough so i don't know how well i'll do but i'm going to give it a shot anyways guys all right, let's get into making the lures. All right, guys, let me show you what I got here. This is going to be my materials. I've got some Daisy BBs, the smallest ones I could find. I got a hammer, and I've got this sharp pointed screw with a flat head. I'm going to use that to make my holes in the bottle caps, and I'll be using these bottle caps for the lures, just random bottle caps that I found. I've got a <clears throat> fingernail sander or emery board that's to take away some of the sharp edges off the bottom of the bottle cap I've got some eagle claw size 4 split rings I've got a ball bearing swivel size 1 and I've got some laser sharp eagle claw size 8 treble hooks I'm going to be using these to make a trout lure and then we're going to go out and we're going to try to catch some trout on them guys alright let's get into making these all right guys, so what I'm doing right here, I'm taking an emery board and I'm filing down all the sharp edges, the little points, just because I don't want those to nick my line or cut my line while I'm trying to fish. Next, I'm taking the bottle caps and I'm gonna bend them in half and pinch them shut to where they're almost closed. I'm just gonna leave a small enough gap so I can insert my Daisy BBs. This will give it extra weight that you'll need if you're fishing in moving current. It'll also give it a rattling sound. I just did different variations of weight and I even left one cap without any just to see how it would do, if there was any kind of difference or effect. Okay, so now I've got some with rattles. I've got one without, I've got one with very very few rattles and little weight just the kind of a variety and I put some holes in this one so water could flow in and out <clears throat> and I believe that the way the cap is shaped it'll cause it to flicker a little bit like a twisting motion now we're going to try to puncture some holes in the very tips so we can run our split rings okay guys so what I did is I went and I found me a coaster that I had a little wooden coaster so it wouldn't damage my table I just took each individual cap that I had and I took my sharp headed screw with a flat head on it so I can make puncture holes in both ends this was so that I could attach my split rings as you can see here I just took those size 4 split rings put one on both ends so I can attach my swivel barrel with um, the locking hook at the top and then a treble hook at the bottom so I'd have my completed lures I definitely recommend you have a pair of split ring pliers this made so much so much sense as it made it a lot easier 
as you can see here i was putting my swivel barrels on this will help you as far as keeping line twists down because this lure does rotate a little bit and you get into some current it'll do some full-blown twists and that's about it guys this went through and i attached all the equipment there and ended up having four different style lures that i made and we're ready to go out and test them out and see how they do stay tuned all right guys i'm out here i'm uh, gonna fish a couple of my local trout stream areas i'm down here below the golf course right now in marion i'm gonna try out that uh lures that i made the homemade hopefully catch a fish on it i wanted to show you this awesome vest that i got from bass dash products it is super lightweight i love the materials it's got pockets for everything you can think of i'll do a more in-depth review later on but it's another video another time uh, but i wanted to take it out and use it today it's awesome it'll hold a lot of lures and stuff and it'll save me from having to carry a big old backpack um, right now i'm just gonna work my way down find a spot i could get to and we'll give these lures a try stay tuned all right miller light one's up first Well, it definitely casts pretty good. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's definitely got a little bit of a wobble action. Yeah, I think these things might work out pretty good. Definitely an awesome lure. I definitely think I'll probably catch something on one of these. Throwing this on my Shimano Stimula. It's an amazing lightweight rod. You can feel a lot of action with it. Got a six pound test on, I believe. All right, guys, I fished the first one about 20 minutes. And I know there's some trout in there. I've seen them bust. I've seen a few swim by. So now I'm going to switch it up. We tried the Miller Lite one first. Golden white color. More closer imitation to a minnow. Now I've got a bright orange Fanta. I left the gap a little bit wider so water could disperse in there. And I got fewer weights in it. Or BBs. But it seems like it makes a little bit more of a rattle. I'm going to give it a shot. Not quite as heavy as the last one, but it definitely still has a presentation. Uh, you can probably see that one a little bit better. So, so I'm working it back to me, but I'm just giving it a little twitch. That water displacement on the inside of the cap makes it twirl and spin. The swivel barrels allow it to turn and not give me line twists. Overall, pretty proud of it. Just yet to determine if it will entice a fish to bite. That's what we're looking for. All right, I'm spot number two. Still got the orange Fanta on. A little, a little bit more rushing water. I'm gonna stay off the bank and try to be as quiet as I can. Anyone knows trout fishing, you know how finicky trout can be. If they hear you or see you, they'll be tight lipped and not bite anything it's going to work it through this current a little bit Let's see if we can get a hit or something first try and I didn't have my camera on oh man <laughs> well 
look at that guys that is a beautiful I believe that is a rainbow look at the colors on that one got him right in the snook I'm gonna try to not handle this guy if I don't have to beautiful trout caught him on that homemade lure Oop, there it goes Wow, guys, there's nothing quite as satisfying as that. I'm gonna take him down here and try to release him without having to handle him. Wow, <laughs> that's very satisfying to make a lure and catch a trout off of it. That was awesome. Let's see if we can let him loose without handling him. Look at that, guys. Let him swim away. He's going to go hide out under that rock. <laughs> uh, wow. And I caught that one on the Miller Lite. I lost my fan of orange. I was casting it up next to a tree, and I should have knew better. Obviously, there was some branches down there. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> That is just so exciting. All right, I'm gonna get back out there and try this again. I have tried the brown one, but the problem with the brown one, it didn't have any weights in it. So when the water's got some movement to it like that, or the rain and stuff's got the water really flowing, it wouldn't really sink, it kept trying to stay up on top. Let's try this spot a few more minutes. And all I'm doing is this reeling it and working it. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it kind of gives off the presentation of a minnow because it's got that white and gold in it. And I'm really, really slowly reeling it. I'll even pause, give it a few twitches, just so it has an action. <clears throat> and that's how I ended up catching him. Once again, I'm using my Shimano reel combo. It's a light action, perfect for trout fishing. Allows me to get some really good casts. Overall, real good presentation too. I'm using four to six pound, I believe this is fluorocarbon line. Berkeley Vanish, I believe is the product name. And I've just been fishing off the tailwaters of the current. When I get out of the current and it get into that slack water, I've just been letting it sink to the bottom, trying to avoid these tree limbs and stuff. And we ended up having an enticed fish come up after that one. It was really awesome. <laughs> now we're out there. We're going to see if we can get us another one, guys. Stay tuned. All right, guys. I'm probably going to be next to last stop. I still got my Miller Lite. I don't know if you can hear that, but... It's got that rattle. I lost my Fanta Orange. It was built pretty much the same way as this one. I still got my brown one, but it doesn't do very well when the water's really swift like this. There's not enough weight to hold it under. It just kind of skips across. Even with the weight in this one, it kind of struggles to get into certain areas. The water will pull it right back up to the top. So be like, kind of like fish in top water, I guess you'd say. Definitely impressed with how it done. Might try and go back and add some feathers to it, the treble. I think that that might work.
I got one. <laughs> He's a nice. It's a nice. Pretty nice. Yeah. He's got beautiful colors too. Beautiful. A wow. nice trout. Beautiful colors. Oh, and he got this. <laughs> Look at him right there. What is that? That was the trout. You're gonna get hung on that rock. No, I'm not, no, I'm not. Guys, I'm back here for a little bit. Downsides to ultralights. Oh my god. This is so scary. Oh, oh. don't you even fish. Oh wow. Come, on. Come down right here. Dad, I actually Wow. Really that is a nice one. He is pretty. Oh, look at the spots. It looks like a leopard. It's a brown. Oh. Beautiful brown. <laughs> I don't want to touch him. Just stop. You want to kiss him? No, I'm just kidding. Hey, buddy. Are you keeping? You want it? We're going to let him have this one. This is a nice trout. Come with you. Say good job. Good job. Horny head. <laughs> that is what you call a horny head. <laughs> <laughs> 